So now we're gonna get back into it, and I really wanna introduce someone who is very special to me, okay? This professor, she teaches people, you know, more, more than academics. She teaches a lot of students about their, their identities, and she teaches them that through uh, a lot of the healing practices that she lends to them. She actually was given the highest honor you can receive as an LME faculty member, um, was awarded the uh, President's Professor Award last year, and those of you in the black community, we know her as the Queen Mother, so. I want to introduce to everybody Dr. Cheryl Bruce, who is a, oh, go ahead, clap. a clinical psychologist with a current emphasis in community psychology, a tenured, and when I say tenured, I mean like she's tenured, like she don't have to work this semester because she don't want to, anyway. <laughs> tenured, tenured full professor in the psychology department. She has been on the faculty of LMU for 34 years and is director of its Psychology Applied Research Center, a national past president of the Association of Black Psychologists, Dr. Grills leads the association's international training on black racial trauma and stress. Most recently, she was appointed to be a member of the California Reparations Task Force by Governor Gavin Newsom. And before you come up here, it just really is a blessing to see you here today because, again, you didn't have to be here because you don't have to show up to the LMU and, like, <laughs> I'm going to be the first one to fail at the 60 seconds, so I'm just going to put that out there now. <laughs> I'm, I'm therefore not going to stress about it. <laughs> but not by much. I won't go over much. I'm ready, I'm Am I ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. So permit me to start with two quotes to offer context for my 60 second lecture. Du Bois wrote, the slave went free, stood a brief moment in the sun, then moved back again towards slavery. This enslavement, I would add, was not just of the body and our labor, it was also enslavement of the mind and control and manipulation of knowledge and information. Now what most folks don't think about is that they too, be it white, Latinx, Asian American, or indigenous, to varying degrees were and are racially enslaved in mind, perception, attribution, knowledge, and information, and more. In the resulting us versus us context, as Afeni Shakur said, they're going to give you the tools you need to destroy yourself. So a host of thoughts come to mind when the theme of the 60 second lecture was shared with me, particularly when I thought about who is the us and us in the context of a society that has been racialized for over 400 years. In fact, a society founded on racist ideology and practice. First, under the constant wave of daily doses of anti-blackness across generations, try as we might, to protect ourselves from messages that we as black people are not human, smart, beautiful, principled, disciplined, moral, trustworthy, trustworthy, competent, and simply just not good people. We, to varying degrees and in varying ways, have succumbed to these lies. The lies creep in and become squatters in our mind, our self-image, our image of each other, and our image of other racial groups. This opens the door for black us versus black us. And you see it in colorism, classism, and assumptions we make, and more. Baldwin offers counsel here when he wrote, please try to remember that what they believe, as well as what they do, and cause you to endure, does not testify to your inferiority, but to their inhumanity. So to conclude, this quote invokes other perspectives on who could be the us in the us versus us. Black folks weren't the only ones getting steady doses about the lie of black inferiority and white superiority. The anti-blackness memo was sent to all people of color and of whom, and try as they might, also got contaminated by the deadly mindset and it resulted in what some of us call the white adjacent racial pecking order, where the goal is to be as close to white in all ways and as far away from black as you can possibly get, leading to us indigenous, Asian, native, Hawaiian, Pacific Island, American, Latinx, et cetera, and white folks versus us, black folks. 
And it's not just between racial groups and black folks. You see, within group anti-blackness attitudes and behaviors are also there. For example, you can see it in the oftentimes invisible Afro-Latino and Latina community within the US and Central and South America. Even premier social justice organizations that champion racial justice struggle with anti-blackness in their own rights. So us is all of us. The good news is that this was and is a manufactured mindset, and because it was created, it can be destroyed. But it will require effort coupled with some depth of understanding informed by critical race theory, history, psychology, and a level of compassion and empathy that respects the humanity of all people. Thank you so much, Dr. Grills. That was well worth going over a minute for. <laughs> your words are truly life-changing, and thank you for sharing your perspective and time with us today.